amendments or anything to the agenda? Not that I know of that. It was a uh, request for a certificate of compliance with 365 Chief Justice Cushing. Yeah, that's on there. Um, yeah, and then it's the first one. And then we had an informal contact to you, what, today? So is that on there? No. Yeah, which one was this? Marshall. Yes, okay. Marshall, they're coming at between 6.30 and 7.30. Okay, I make a motion we accept the agenda. Oh, and um, because I want to touch on the Ellis property for one minute at some point. Okay, um, with the two... Amendments. Add on amendments. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Um, and I know that you guys are all patiently waiting, but if you can give us a couple more minutes. And I just yeah, now we have sure. to get it to project. Um, yes, I'm going to make an announcement. Yeah, yeah that, it's not happening. Okay. If anybody is here for the Toll Brothers tonight, that hearing is going to be continued. Um, do we know when? Um, we won't continue it till but we won't be able to actually physically continue it till 7 p.m. But it'll be on the 21st, um, probably at 7. But I'm not sure yet. I gotta wait. Gilson Road too. We're gonna be. Pardon me. Gilson Road is going to be continued too. It is. So the twenty first. And Gilson Road, which is a six twenty hearing, will be continued to the twenty first. So if anybody's hanging here for that. The twenty first, you said, Frank. Yeah. All right. So I can make make a motion on G Gilson at six twenty. Sure. I make a motion that we continue Gilson to June twenty first at. 640. What else do we have on already, Frank? Um, the time is set to wait Gardner. Is there a chance that that's going to get continued again? Which one? Gardner. Gardner Road. Um, uh, you think? That might, that might be on. I'll back that one right up to it. Cause okay, 30, 635 then, all right. Well, when was, when was? 630. Yeah, so 635. Yeah. Somebody needs to second that. I have a second. Paul. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> From afar. Aye. Forget the multitasking bill. Just get that thing working. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, six twenty-one. Worry oh. about the other way. Pat, is there any um small? Yeah. You want to do those two orders of condition? They'll be quick. Jericho and Jason's line. Yeah, I make a motion that we accept the orders of condition as written for 169 Jericho Road. For second? I second. All in favor? Aye. I make a motion we accept the orders as written for 5 Jason's line. For the second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There was a uh, Hunter's Pond Dam update too. That's going to be starting the last week of June, and they're going to block the roads and. Start um, actually, on. June nineteenth is when they're going to start staging. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think they'll be in the water July first. Okay. So it's getting close. Yeah, they had to wait till then for the fisheries too. <sighs> yeah, there there was something, but um, they will be. Staging, getting everything ready because that section of the road will be blocked off for a few months. There will be emergency vehicles can get through, but that's it. For where? Um, at Mordecai Mord Mord Lincoln, between the barn and the Cohasset yep. side. When's it going to start? June nineteenth. They're supposed to start staging down there. They can't get in the water until July first. So they'll have everything in place, all the hay bales, this, that, and the, okay. the barriers up, and um, they might even do What's that? Is there a mouse or a clicker? Yeah, I see it right That's what I thought. Try that. Ah. 
Green light. Flashing green. It takes a village. Well, something's happening up there. Don't kick the wires, Richard. Yeah, but <laughs> some I've never seen some wires. How are you, sir? That's all right. We we haven't even really started. We're trying to get something a show for the kids. Here we go. If there's any selectmen in the room, that's why we need Bill on for another ten years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have a new position, Vice President of Information Technologies. <laughs> The tech kid? Yeah. You'd think he'd know. I don't know. I can't even get on my own computer without trouble. <laughs> a bunch of troubles. Okay. And if anything happens, I have to call the addresses on this. Uh, what else we got? Certificate of compliance. Yep. Was um, 365 Chief kind of Justice quick, Cushing quickly, was a uh, septic, mm -hmm. and yeah. this, uh, we had asked that all that debris along the side be removed. So I went out there today; it's all still there. Mm -hmm. There's actually more there now. And then there's a um, oh, pumping. Nice. I don't know, if some pump up. or whatever, but it, there's a pipe going into the wetland from the house. So, Yay. Uh, so we can't <laughs> issue the certificate, and we can also follow up with a letter. Okay, okay you're gonna let them know. Yeah. Is there an engineer involved with that, or? or uh, uh, there was a septic person in originally, but I don't know if there is now. The homeowner is in there requesting the certificate. Okay. Um, Two thirty-eight Central. Central Ave. Yeah, I don't know if we received all the. Uh, the opposite, the pier. Yeah, I don't think we received the check or the uh, the paperwork, but the house has been sold, and somebody new is in, so there's not a big rush. I think we can make sure we have everything for the next meeting. All right, you have 238, a oh, riprap at base of seawall? Yeah, they had two different orders yeah. over time. So, so are they neither both? Neither one is neither complete, one. okay. Um, lot one, 189, 189 Glades Road, Glades. partial. This, this is the big house on the left when you walk, Glades, yeah. the first one, and they the scaled the size of the house down by yeah. like a third anyway. So. There was one area that we re requested plantings that now we're going to leave natural, but um, they're asking for a partial with the understanding that they'll plant the plants and then they'll wait the two years for the full certificate. So it's green. Okay. So I mean, it's it's seeded. The septic is in. The people are in there living, and it's you know just a matter of getting the plantings in. Okay. Did so. you possibly go down? After the rain, to see you were ta talking about some water going down the street. Right, it was about 80 feet from the wetland. It's a ditch that goes into the upland, so it's oh. not going to get it to the wetland. Okay. There's got to be a couple of engineers in this room that know how to do this. What do you think? Yeah. Want to give it a whack? Are you mirroring the display? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm duplicating it. Okay, so you're going to issue the partial? We could issue a partial, I would think, and then we could follow up. Yeah with the planting to make sure that gets done. I guess that's okay. Sounds good yep. to me. All right. Um, what do you think? Anybody else want to take a whack at this? Real quick. Oh. We might have to demote Bill. Frank, you want to ask yeah, he's for, for, only for, for a letter of support for the trail work? If sure. Yeah, that's now. a good idea. So we have a request from um, a group of folks that have been doing our volunteer trail work to get some um, GPS mapping equipment, paper, signage, all that sort of thing. This is um, Marla Minier working with her husband Rich, Howard Matthews, who are going out and doing a lot of our trails. Yeah. And now we want to get them all on GIS, GPS mapping system. So they're going to 
request funds for that through CPC and they're just looking for um, a letter of support from the Commission um, for that equipment and I don't see any reason why we wouldn't they've done a fantastic job yes. and um, I'd like to give them our um, support when they approach CPC for that uh, for that money absolutely absolutely um, yep so I'll make a motion that we send a letter of support to CPC for the trail the G GPS G G yes is it GIS slash GPS oh. second <laughs> oh, whatever. Oh, okay. <laughs> it just so happens I have a letter for you guys to sign. Oh, okay. That's out of coincidence. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, How is that girl now? Um, Hunter's born, man. Anything happen with the beach committee, Lisa? The beach committee? Anything new there? Um, so we had a Richard and I were at the uh, last Coastal Commission. Maybe Richard wants to. Right? Yes, we were there, and I'm trying to think what we talked about. Um, Basically, we're preparing for the Hummer Rock. We were preparing for the Hummer Rock meeting that happened last evening at the uh, at the new center, and uh, very certainly the best attended for the Hummer Rock people. Best attended meeting I've seen ever, and. Uh, the discussion was exclusively about um, the dredging to go around on Hamrock Beach if people will will give uh, permission to do that and the raising of Central Avenue was very well attended a lot of uh, much more educated questions um, still not sure that everybody's totally bought in on it but it's certainly making progress in that regard and, and Nancy Durfee deserves a tremendous amount of credit for all the work that has gone into getting the funding, or at least potential funding, to handle stuff like that, not only there, but earlier on, on uh, walls that are being constructed on Turner Road as well. So it was a very um, well-run meeting. Yeah. Well, the commitment to foreshore protection in situate has ramped up a lot. And for yeah. That happens to be a high priority in uh, the north part of Hamrock, but it's not the only priority. There are many others that are. No, going I know on. that they're, we're working on the uh, berm at Egypt Beach too. Right. What's wrong with the berm? It needs to be reconstructed. It's been knocked down. It got knocked down. It knocked back. Yeah. Oh. Frank, up on the um, administrative items is the DPW mitigation. Mm -hmm. And this is the, um, the work that was done on Bayberry and on Ocean Drive. And um, we're still trying to set up a meeting with Public Works and oh, with the, right. the property developer to do some mitigation on street drainage on that one. And I know you wanted to attend. I don't know if anybody else wanted to attend. When's that going to uh, be? Mr. Sharon's project. Yeah. We're trying to get uh, Kevin and Sean. Okay. It'll probably be in the morning sometime. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'll, let me know. I'll give them some dates and then I'll email Thank you. everybody. Because if it goes on too much longer, you know, it'll get lost. Well, it gets lost in the shuffle. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's good. Yeah, we can. Um, it's longer the kids can last. We did that. We did that. If you think this is going to be a few more minutes, we can do a. Um, this is what we want to do. Maple Street or is the reservoir are we just gonna um Yeah, they're here tonight, they're gonna give us an update. Okay. Um I think Maple Street was a quick one. I don't think yeah, this gentleman. All right, let's take a why don't we do that? So this is lot B Maple Street and this is a continuation. I can't remember exactly what the issue was, but I know it wasn't big. But if the slideshow comes on, you might have to wait. Preemptive. Yeah. Shouldn't be this difficult. No. Go ahead, Scary, to go to. Uh, hi, my name is James Garfield. I'm an engineer working over at Morse Engineering. 
Uh, I'm representing Henry um, <laughs> Henry Holmes, oh. <laughs> and this is for the NOI at Lot B Maple Street. And um, so, as you guys know, Greg Morse came in here at one of the previous meetings and reviewed the plan with you guys. And the only concern you guys had was the proposed building inside of the riverfront area. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, the blue line on the plan is the riverfront area, and we have moved the building back just behind it. So um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions? No, that uh, I remember it, it was something. Minor. Yes, we I've just got several it. questions. So one thing we asked for. That's well. That's that one time. thing I wanted to uh, verify. Was that the only issue we had with this? Right. Yeah. Oh, the the was outside the hundred, See? or in the hundred, yeah. but outside the fifty, and then yeah. the building it was just in the riverfront area, and with just a slight movement just of two feet, it, it could be taken outside the riverfront. Right. So okay. they agreed to do that. So. Okay. I'm good. Thanks. That's really busy. good. Well, Lisa? Did they? Did you get Board of Health approval? Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. If you I need me, we were waiting for that. That's what I've got in my notes: awaiting Board of Board of Health approval. Right. So, the OC would just say pending Board of yeah. Health approval. Yeah. Yeah, because it is in the Water Resource Protection District, so Jen has it. I don't know if she had the vote on it yet, but we could do it pending. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. Is there anyone out there, Frank? Is there anybody in the audience to, that would like to speak to uh, Maple Street, Lot B? Okay. I make a motion to close with the stipulation that the orders cannot be written until the Board of House approval comes in. Second. Sure. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Okay, thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey. Hey. Wow. Oh, well, we got here. Thank you. Wow. Yay wow. for Thank us. You Yay for you. Yay for you. <laughs> Do you want to be on ConCon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bill, Bill, you're up. Just She's in. <laughs> well done. Thank you very much. Do you have something in front of the board tonight? Because, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you need. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Setting that up. So. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I did most of it. I just got it right to the edge there. We want to kill like one <laughs> set of lights or something. Yeah. There we go. So, yeah. or nothing. Shut them off. off. Oh. Yeah. Come on. So Thank I you. I just wanted to yeah. introduce some of the um, yeah. students. Uh, the students at Citron High School in the IXL program. Um, Zara West, Colin Carr, Aaron Bird, and Amy Courtney. Well done. Um, at the IXL program over the summer at different locations throughout the town. We have some pictures just showing them at work so that you get an idea of the types of things that they're doing um, in the community. So this is work that they, we um, raise funds and have received contributions. This time the course foundation has given us enough money to pay the students this summer for their work, the students that are in the summer program um, and it is not quite um, enough that we think they deserve, but it's a nice stipend amount, so they will receive a paycheck for the work that they do, um, which we think is only fair. And they do excellent work, and we applaud them tonight. So I will run the slideshow. Can't be cool enough for me. So this is the Morning Conservation Park. If we can get them all to stand together, I can take a picture of Carol, put it on the website. Okay. Music. <laughs> so this is a couple of them. That's Colin, who's with us tonight. All right, Colin. And Matt Flanagan, who is, has turned 22 and has moved on from the program. Yeah, so where are you working there, Colin? Like the, like near the pond almost, like you can see in the background. Did anybody get poison ivy? No. No? <laughs> Look at you. All right. So that's Sarah and Colin. Yeah. Trimming. Yes. Trimming bushes back. Yeah. And using the tools. It's like a nice uh, stone wall, which is kind of famous around here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
It's Pat hiding in the background there. <laughs> So this is in um, mostly July, so it's really hot. Yeah. And they're outdoors working, keeping the town beautiful. Nice. This is Katie. Katie Courtney this yep. year. Yeah, mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Get right in there. That's yeah. a big pile. <laughs> I'll get your hands dirty. Yeah. Sarah, it's you, Sarah. Yeah. Then they're having a water break. Break time, coffee break. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they smile while they work. Oh, yeah, <laughs> happy workers. <laughs> 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 Just another little bit of nice. Okay. Wow. Oh, thank you Great so job. much. Um, that was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> That's our first audio-visual uh, Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you for dragging us up to the 1990s. Probably be the last. So, yeah. <laughs> um, we really, really, uh, this commission, the Conservation Commission, so much appreciates the efforts uh, of, um, of your program and all the work that you folks do for, with us and for us. Um, the Driftway Park is a place where an awful lot of people come and go to Situate. They come into Situate on the Driftway. A lot of people will stop there. And um, you're really the reason that it's kept up and kept clean. And, and if it weren't for your efforts, that wouldn't look anything like it does right now. So we are truly appreciative uh, um, of all the efforts that, that all of you put forth. Uh, on that, it's uh, it's fantastic, and I had a chance to go to your breakfast the other morning, and it was delicious. And uh, I don't know who made all the muffins and things, but they were all very good. The kids did, yeah. <laughs> they, they made them in their family and consumer science class. Uh, it was awesome, wow. and uh, so much of the work that you do is just is really appreciated. And we have um, just a kind of a simple thank you. Um, if I could read these. Uh, the Town of Situate Conservation Commission appreciates and recognizes Colin Carr for the third year of cleaning the Conservation Park. This effort means so much to the Conservation Commission and the residents of your town. Okay. Uh, the Town of Situate Conservation Commission appreciates and recognizes Sarah Ann West for the third year of Clean the Conservation Park. This effort, again, means so much to the town situate and, uh, and its residents, and we appreciate it. So is there a gift to give? What is that, gift to give? did. The Town of Situate Conservation Commission would also like to acknowledge Katie Courtney for her efforts in the second year cleaning the Conservation Park. Nice, Katie, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Again, appreciate, we'd like to thank and acknowledge the work of Aaron Berg for our second year of Cleaning Conservation Park and uh, how much this means for, for the town. Thank you, Aaron. So, so what's it, the gift certificates in there? What? There's a little thing for Maria's sub, and if when you go there, if you could ask Buddy nice. for extra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just mention Frank's <laughs> name. Yeah. <laughs> and also, just a little word of wisdom. No matter where you work in life, you'll probably Want to give him a stand, you know? Want to give him a stand, you know? Hey, Lisa. Lisa. Yeah. Give so Here we go. Hey, Paul. Paul. Well done. Thank you very, very much. Thanks so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
<laughs> Ma'am, you can't leave. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you to turn it off before I go? No, we'll figure it off where you're good at. Don't worry about it. We're good. Thanks a lot. Hey, John. Take care. Uh-huh. Not tonight. I, I think we'll get to you, but thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, we're working. No, no. It's a slow. Thank you. Yeah. And our, our enjoyable meeting for another year. <laughs> That's right. Um, a positive. Yeah, a positive. Very yeah. positive. So we have a request for a review of a revised plan for 160 CJC. Do we want to move on that one? Yes. Okay. Come on, Chuck. Hi. I'm Bill Arnberger. Uh, Chuck Harris is with me tonight, and I'll explain all this. This is Rob Collison from uh, Grady Engineering. And uh, by way by way of uh, a little bit of a background, there's an existing order of conditions on the property, and uh, the existing order of conditions originally from a prior person was to raise and reconstruct the house, which has had some uh, damage to it and to provide a new Title V septic system. Uh, Chuck and his wife Linda have an agreement on the property and all they're doing is they're going to do some uh, renovation work in the interior of the property. They're no longer going to raise or reconstruct the property. There is a lot less grading, a lot less site work. They're ready to file with the uh, for a revised uh, septic plan, which is a, a lot less for what they're going to do, is because presently under the uh, under the zoning, you really, really can't raise and reconstruct the house anyhow. And Chuck and his wife are looking to downsize. And uh, I know the neighbors uh, in the interim that the house has been unoccupied for some time, and the neighbors uh, supportive of this would like to see some other, you know, see the property rehabilitated. So. What the grading engineering plan is this, we'd like to use this to supplement the other plan. All the existing mitigation work and all that stuff would still be done. The only difference, we're not raising and reconstructing the house or pilings or any other, we're leaving it as is. And we are cognizant that even though uh, Chuck's familiar with the property and it didn't flood in the storm of 78, that nevertheless he'd get whatever appropriate flood insurance that he needed. So that's in a, in a nutshell. Uh, what we're looking to do is to just use that plan to supplement it because it is within, at least in our opinion, it's within the scope of the original order. And as a matter of fact, there's a lot less work than what was originally contemplated. So what you're in, Bill, is, is basically looking for requested to minimize the work there. Correct. Um, when the, the prior applicant was here, were they tearing down the? Yes. That was the right. Jay, tearing it down, building decks, doing all kinds of stuff. Right. Was he an engineer yes. or an architect? Right? He, he was an engineer. Yeah. And the amend and you're going to amend the plan for the septic system. Well, that, that is that is the new that's the septic plan which we're going to file with the Board of Health is if we if we can supplement this plan. They're waiting to file with the Board of Health. And they're just leaving, the, there is no work, uh, conservation work at all on the house. The exterior is exactly the same as what it is. We're just doing interior. Chuck's going to uh, do some interior work on the property to fix any uh, damage and do some renovations to the property. So basically, you're not doing the project. You're not doing the project. You're not doing the project. No, well, we're, we're, we're building a septic system. It's a simpler septic right. system. There's a lot less grading and all that, yeah. Is there a rule that says that somebody has to do a project that's been approved? No. No. No, we've had people come right. in here that they didn't do the project. Right. So wouldn't it just be a file for a septic system? Well, yeah. What? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a couple of different mm -hmm. questions here. One is whether you need to have a public notice uh, for a change of a project where there's a foundation there now. We have approved pilings, which would allow free flow of water. Now they want to leave the foundation. So it was approved under one model. So I, I passed out some information on whether 
something can be revised as a revised plan or amended through a notice with an amendment and a meeting. And it's, you guys can read through it and see what you think about it. But I mean, it's a, it's a change to what we approved. Um, the same footprint that's there now will remain and there'll be a, a foundation raised, constructed above that. But what we approved was free flow of water. What zone is oh. it in? It's in an AE-16 and it had been an AE-10, so it's... But the structure's already there. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so they're not doing the project. Right, so the, the, the way... They're not going to raise... Yeah, if I can integrate this, them. what your project was, was to build a new house right. and to build a Title V compliant septic system. What we're saying is, we're not building a new house, we're leaving it the same it is, and we are building a Title V septic system, but it's much less grading and it's a, it's a lesser septic system. So all we're really looking but to do. don't we have some kind of uh, substantial value criteria? So it, that's, that would be, that'd be the building department. That's building department. Uh, yeah. So basically they're not gonna raise and rebuild, which you can't make them no, do that. Yeah. We've had people come in and say, we, I wanna get these orders released. We never did the project. Well, well, one of the things that Paul is saying is, is this a project that could be approved fairly easily? And yeah. without a change in the footprint, I think it could be. It's just the notice and the public meeting part of it is what I'm but wondering. And that's why to get I, I, right. I give that to you too, Bill, whether you but need it, to revise or amend. It's already there, that and it's, yeah, but they're changing it, the it may be that the project itself is no further harm, but what we approved was something different. Do abutters and other neighbors have the right to come to a hearing to see what the change is or not? Well, if I, if I could speak to that to get back to the point, what, we're, we're not amending the plan. We're not doing part of this. And the septic, the only, the only issue is the septic. So in other words, we're not, there's a, there's a non-compliant Title V septic system. We're gonna make this so it's environmentally compliant. And because we're not building a new house, it's a much lesser grading and things along those lines. So we're not acting the way I'd look at it is we've had, you know, uh, this, has been, this has been noticed, it's been published. I mean, in other words, it's been posted and all we're looking to do is to supplement the plan. As a matter of fact, we're still doing the same mitigation work. We're still doing everything else. We're just not building the house. So in other words, as far as notice and amended orders, I don't think it's appropriate. I, I know before this commission on several occasions, if we were doing something that was less or if it was within the scope of the original order, that you could supplement it with a, with a revised plan. And as far as I can understand if you were building a new house or a different house or a different location. But it's well, we're saying, quo. Yeah, yeah we're it's saying we're, not, we're not doing that, period. Right. Yeah. But isn't our mandate to get things in the flood zone up on pilings, I mean, and if this were, but you can't make you can't do make it. people I, do easy, it. Easy, yeah. easy. Um, I agree I, that if you could cut the vents in this and you raise the that's foundation, where you're I was gonna going to meet the standards. You're going to meet the performance standards. The only issue I have, I mean, it's semantics. The only issue is we've approved something with a free flow of water. We've approved an approved plan. It's it was a much better plan than this, and that's what we approved. Do we need to go back and notify people and let them come and comment on this? Or can we just say it's a revised plan, it's no more impact than it's currently there? It's just a question. That's why I printed right, that out. Right. And so I mean so it's whatever. not not to just pick and choose on the sheet pat, but on the yeah. second page it says in determining whether amended OC OOC should be issued or a new notice of intent required, DE recommends to consider whether the purpose of the project has changed, which I would say that it has not. Yeah, there's several things. Well, let's, let's, let's tick, right. tick them off. Yeah. So the purpose of the project has changed. I don't, I don't believe that right. is the case. The scope of the project has increased. I don't believe that's the case. The project has revised, as has revised, revised, meets relevant performance standards. Um, I guess that would be the the one to to decide whether it it is or it it doesn't. If they're cutting in, if they're going to cut in flood um, uh, vents, yeah. is that part of the plan? No, no. On the first floor, this is a kitchen on the first floor. But what I'm saying is, 
all the whole thing here was because in your jurisdiction someone was building a brand new house yeah. and we're not building a brand new house mm -hmm. in other words we're, we're keeping exactly as it is because there's zoning issues here and at this juncture either a we do what we're doing or b you have a septic system that is not in compliance with title five and a house that is never going to be used for anything but i guess bill just maybe you can help me with this yeah so the project as revised right so the revision is to go from the driven piles to the, the what, no what, what i would say frank is the project is we're not doing the house the project what we are doing is making a title five compliant septic system that has less grading and is less than what has already been approved i, I understand that but you're leaving a house you're leaving a house and foundation that's non-compliant correct but that's been there before if if they were putting in um flood panels is that sufficient to make that compliant i i'm not i don't know but you just not i would say right back to the root base we're not doing the project that would be my position i'm right. not going to do the project and right. if you really want to cleave it i'm going to file a plan to do a septic system that's the way i interpret right it yeah too. i'm not doing that project well, anymore yeah, i guess that the, the, yeah. the flood panels could be up to the building inspector then yeah if, if they yeah, look at that's it. that's his call and then the potential for adverse impacts to the protected statutory interests will be increased that's where so how do you fit the box I, well, I would say um, because you you would have had you get a lot of flood waters in the AE 16 so if you have pilings the water is going to flow freely around it if you have solid foundation and no vents you're going to be directing water uh, well, I understand exactly what you're saying and I would be totally in favor of that happening it's but existing. is there a rule that says they have to do it no it, no it's it's not a matter whether the project could get approved it's a matter of whether they need to amend it and have a public meeting it's got nothing to do with whether a building will say you can do it or not so if somebody we did this not too long ago yeah. someone came in they had a project approved they came in years later and said we didn't do the project and we want to get a certificate of compliance and get this off of our deed. So what did we do? If you didn't do the project, is one thing. This was proposing a much better project, the original one. But, but, it was not but, so, but, this, was, but this was proposed by some people that then backed away from it. So those people right, are no right. longer in the mix. And the other thing, too, is that the flood, base flood elevation changed on this from the original plan. And now is even more of a reason to maybe vent it and to take care of flood issues. But again, it, it, but it would have to be for them to come before us to change the structure, and then we would have the ability to, to, to dictate what we think should be there for a foundation. I, I'm not disagreeing that there's right. better solutions oh, to this foundation, but in this case, and, and it does go on to say that really this is the final decision of this matter rests entirely with the conservation with the commission is what the end of that says so um, you know I think I guess given that if this house were like right against an abutter where that water could be shifted on to that person fairly easily I think most engineers would look at this and they'd say that the compensatory area of that area that's there and the small amount of area that's in that foundation is really negligible if if they were flooding in that area if you take that whole whole estuary right the volume is considered unlimited yeah coastal storm right, flowage is infinite it's unlimited and and then you take this small foundation it it, it doesn't amount to anything with this and any water flowing around that structure or whatever is not going to have any impact on on an abutting piece of property that I can I can see I mean I'm fairly familiar with that spot and I just don't see where that would would change anything but are we obligated to let the abutters know that there's been a change because the last time they were here it was one thing I don't I mean there's still going to be a septic system which is really the disruption that happens on that and they're aware of that that was part of the the filing before it's actually going to be less of a disruption I'm I, I don't really and see that's an enhancement yeah putting in a 
it's, Title Five Septic. It's an existing foundation. Right. Yes. Yeah, so but it's a new owner, and we have it's an It's still our existing. Right. Wow, say it again. So he has a right to use that foundation, whether it's the best practice. Yeah. It's existing. That's what I keep going back to. He is not changing anything except putting in a compliant septic system. He <clears throat> is using the existing foundation, the existing building, in a new septic. Is it the existing foundation? Yeah, yes. it's a hut. Oh, they were yeah, going to knock I, it down, I, build a new house. Okay. Now they're going to not do it. Yeah. He was going to do everything <laughs> new. I mean, it's existing. I, Is it existing? Yes. Yes, yeah. Well, but I, that's I the agree whole with thing. that. How right. can we make somebody do we something on can't. something that's right. already so, existing? So, what is our process then for amending that's why the here. orders? I don't think we're amending it. I think that if this is. We're revising the septic. Well, They're coming in for a review of a re revised plan, which is basically shrinking the septic system. And in these cases, when something is reduced, we typically have never had an issue with that. Yeah. You know, if they came in and said, you know what, we're going to make this house bigger, you know, you, we had a plan before and this house was right. 25 by 40, right. and now we want to make it 60 by 80, and say amend, the, you know, on a bigger septic system, we'd say, well, you're going to have to amend those orders. Right. But that's not what is happening here. Okay. So you feel we can just revise Personally, it? I know that that's a little contrary to um, all the thinking, <laughs> but I, I, I just don't see where this has any bearing that's, that's significant that would, that if would they not were enlarging it. But that's right. Right. Then, then, then that, that opens the whole, like, but what Pat was saying, if they wanted to put an addition like on or. A smaller septic in that area, smaller leaching, everything's going to be smaller in a sensitive area. And it, in one sense, I'm compliant. It's good. I don't see. I just don't see an issue. So, I don't even know. Do we vote on that? Well, I'll make a motion to accept the revised plan. We'll take a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Oh. Anybody in the audience? Now that we voted? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a couple more things. So the gate that's just at your house, or to be your house, <laughs> yeah. there's like six padlocks hanging on it. Must be six separate people have different locks, I would yeah. imagine. So we, we looked at that right away a long time ago, and it's a right away that was given actually to the railroad to maintain the railroad bed, was my understanding. It's public. The, the commission looked at it for the construction of possibly a, a bridge at some point over the Herring Brook, because one of the pretty one of the prettiest areas in situate is that railroad bed. I've never been there until I looked at this house. I've lived in the town my whole life. Yeah. Did, did you walk it? Yeah, my, yeah, my, it's, it's my father used it? to swim down there when he was a young kid. With my one father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the yeah. prettiest. So the property in the town. Yeah. So it's it's absolutely beautiful. Stunning. And it, sometime, you know, it was a project that was proposed before and might come back again to, to build some sort of walkway across there. Um, but when I, I happened to just take a walk out there a month or so ago and um, unfortunately somebody's dumped a whole kitchen at the end of the road. Um, somehow somebody got out there and then dumped a whole bunch of trash at the end. Somebody so, almost had a lock. Yeah. yeah a, a key to the lock, yeah. So I know that a few people have access that have uh, yeah. one of the islands or something that's that's out beyond there. Be curious. I don't I don't know who it is. Uh, you know that I, I, I've only been there a few times. And, right. And I, it's always been locked. I, I know years ago, Vinnie Kalicious used to have a lock cutter. Do we he used to cut the locks. Cut he used to cut the locks because it's a public it's public yeah. access. Yeah. Well, and somebody got hurt. Yeah. Riding a bike. Mm-hmm. Okay. And hit that wire. Well, maybe yeah. sometime when you wind up there and sort of sort that out, maybe we could figure out how to. Um, you want me to cut the wire? I'll cut it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not that. advocating that. I'm not saying that. You're, that's up to you and your attorney. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.
Well, Pat's not going to talk to us for three more here. <laughs> Town of Situate, DPW 430, Chief Justice Cushing Highway Reservoir. Good evening. I'm Tom Cook, and this is Pete Pellin. We're uh, with Tech. We work for uh, Al Banger with the uh, Department of Public Works on this project. And I just want to give you an update. We have uh, filed an ENF that was published in the Environmental Monitor today. Oh, and we are, uh, I just have scheduled a public meeting for the MEPA process uh, for the 21st of June. And I guess what we are suggesting is that you uh, continue the hearing uh, till we get input from the, uh, the MEPA folks. Pete, you want to add to that or? Um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, um, we're still expecting for you to deny this project. Um, at some point, but <laughs> but before uh, that happens, I think it would be good if we cl if you close the hearing at this point, then anything that comes out of the NEPA process, you really can't really kind we of. We have to, yeah. yeah, right. So, so what we'd like to do, and 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 the real kind of elephant in the room is probably the federal government more than the state government, um, with the Army Corps of Engineers, et cetera, et cetera. Trying to draw them out sometimes is a little difficult. Um, however, during the MEPA process, they will definitely comment. So um, they'll and 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 at the same time, DEP will probably comment additionally, um, not just the wetlands comments that you've received already, but probably the Division of Water Supply and the people that actually funded the project, the swimming uh, the swimming people. So um, what we'd like to do is continue. Um, initially, I was going to say uh, for. Until the first the first meeting in July, but I think that if we continue to the 21st, now that we have a MEPA scoping session set up, um, that if nothing else, we can let you know what happened during it. Which will be earlier in the day from your next meeting. Okay. So, so you want to come on the 21st? Uh, yeah, I think uh, you know. I mean, again, just to kind of let you know what what happened. Um, it could you know it could be something that's really good, or it could be something that's really bad, or it could be like, boy, this is going to be hard. So, um, just to kind of keep you guys all abreast. But again, I, I think probably in the long run, we're still, we're still looking at that, um, you know, a denial here and then a denial at DEP and then a seeking of variance. So, I know we asked this before, but I forgot the answer. What, what is the, the negative side of if we didn't deny it and approved it? Um, if you d didn't deny it and approved it, DEP would, would deny it. Right. Uh, right, but so what's the downside of us approving it? Uh, um, Our track record. <laughs> <laughs> Which is there, there isn't right around 500. A, a yeah. downside? I mean, I think that maybe when, you, when, when um, things come out of the, what, what comes out of the MEPA scoping session and we give you some inf additional information, um, you can make some additional decisions. The other thing is, is that if, if you did issue a denial, you could also issue conditions of that denial that potentially could help things as it goes down the road. But until kind of all the, all the little things, there's going to be a lot of things that come out of left field on this. Um, the Division of Marine Fisheries is very in favor of this, so you're going to see that you know, as a positive. Uh, same with the water supply, obviously. Um, how the Army Corps comes out on this, I, you know, um, you, you got to remember that that surface water supply permitting um, in this state hasn't happened in a long time. In fact, I'm pretty sure that the last one that actually happened, um, cert I, I can't say anything about Western Mass, but I know quite a bit about Eastern, was probably Aaron River Reservoir in Cohasset in 1978. Huh. So uh, you know, it just it just it just doesn't happen. Yeah. So the orders of conditions, when and if we get to that point may be a little bit more educated by the process that happens exactly. in between then. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Uh, don't forget the Hannigan Reservoir in Rockland. Yeah, but see that I know I know that I know that you talk what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, but that's really not necessarily waters of the United States because it's a it's a that's a quarry, right? No, this would well it's off behind Home Depot. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, they made it. They were able to make it deeper. Okay. Um, but it's not necessarily connected to anything. It's, huh. when, you, it's when you start connecting things and I you get it. wetlands. That, that that's that was done. Uh, that was existing. The you know, other one that I know um, that was done. I, actually, I talked to 
uh, Meldon Langley, who's the head of the wetlands section on this, and, and he was kind of, uh, you know, he said the last one he could remember working on was in Rockport, which was, again, very similar to the, to okay. the to Rockland, which was, you know, a quarry rather than a... Then a, a, a exactly where something where a brook throws through it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So when you get that brook throwing, flowing through it, that's when you run into a problem. I get it. Huh. Okay. Well, we're, we, the outcome of all this with the fisheries improved and, and, and whatnot seems positive to us. I realize there's so much more that we're not e even aware of. And, and uh, so, we, but we do want to help in that process. Yeah. I mean, you have the full support of at least this board I'm assuming the town unless, unless there's some speak for the town negative for at least piece that's like you board. said there's a negative piece that's brought to light that we're not open. Uh, it's it's more about how to work within regulations that never really thought about how to fix things Something like, like this, this. Yeah. you know it's the same type of thing when dams first started coming down as you can mm -hmm. see um, you know Sam's been very good about getting dams down um, but at first, um, you know, that was a major alteration. You were taking a, a water body, land underwater, and you were draining it, and you were trying to turn it back into a BDW. And everyone was like, well, you can't do that. But, you know, now it's happening on a regular basis. This is, this is, this isn't, this, what we're talking about here isn't exactly. happening. We're cutting edge. Right. Yeah. Cutting edge, yeah. 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 He the first one. It's us. It's never yeah. a good thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, so I, we're going to continue? Yep. Um, is there anybody in the audience that has any questions? Or? <coughs> okay. I make a motion to continue. Um, Town of Situa, DPW 430, Chief Justice Cushing Highway, the Reservoir, to June 21st at 640. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, we're very curious Thanks to see lot. how this all runs along. Oh, you're not the Have fun. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peter, Thanks, guys. Yeah. Peter, yeah. do you have a card? Can I? Um, if not, I can get some to pat or I have his email. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Good. I'll do that. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't. But he yep. does have my email address, which has all my all my contacts. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, so Toll Brothers, um, and we have a request for a continuation. So if yes. anybody's here, this is just going to get continued. Um, did they, do we have a time? Is it the next meeting? It's the next meeting. June 21st. And, and what do we have for time right now? Okay. Right now we have the town of Sitch with Gardner at 630. 635 Gilson, 640 the Reservoir. So they would be... So 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Um, okay. I make a motion to continue the Toll Brothers Hatherley Road to June 21st at 7 o'clock. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, Carter, Lot 9A, Surfside Road. We can't I don't think we can go to that one yet. No, because ah, sure. They're here. They're here. Yeah, but we need the time to get started. Does everybody want some chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> we have to wait till 7:30 because it's been posted at 7:30. It's a good system. Thank you. Some chocolate. Sure. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> what do you know? Yeah, oh. I don't know where they are, but I'm curious. I need to know. I'm going to have to come in here to carry this for you. Yeah, they could all. Oh, thank you. The character? Yeah. Eat it for me. Oh. Thank you. 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 Thank yeah. What he did, and what he did to that culvert. I think he saved that culvert. Yeah, I think too. Yeah. It was yeah. falling in. Yeah. It was kind of good. So, 
are we just well, what else can we um, get to hash over pardon me what else do we have to hash over for the next well we can vote on the orders oh you know you know what's on here what? you don't have on the Gannett Road we already did Lane Gannett Road we already voted on the mark okay. Um, Talk about certificates of compliance. Lane, Ian. What's your agreement? Where, where are we talking about this? No, we, are we talking about this one tonight? No. I think we voted them. Oh, we did? No, but I need to know. I think we okay. So we already did the orders and the COCs? Yeah. This is the bad part. You know what we'll discuss? Okay, but I'm gonna run to the from our perspective, that's okay because they said we need to put time for stuff. Okay. All right, so. On our menu, put hearings will start at 7 or 6.30 in right. this order. Because whenever we have one, we leave a big block, like toll brothers, and they continue. Yeah, so we right. to get back out of it. Oh, I know, but the bottom line is we don't do those times anyway. We've talked about it before. We should say notice of intent hearings will start at 6. The reality is we're only spreading them over. Yeah, well, it seems reasonable. So what can does somebody else be doing? Does anybody want a Starburst? Hey Carol, you want chocolate or a Starburst? He stopped at Jones on the way. You got all these. Yeah. I'm calling Jones. Where'd you stop? Jones. Uh, Ronnie Jones. On on the way here, I I drove by as he's coming out of Ronnie Jones with his bag full of goodies. Did find the last one for one. On the way, person. I want you guys to remember me. What? <laughs> oh no. No, I, they'd have a nut allergy and I'd get sued or something. Oh, are we still on tape? Yeah. I don't know where this yeah. is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what are these guys here for? Um, what kind of thing? Oh, they are? Nobody wants that deal. We were. Lisa, me, and Pat were out at Surfside yesterday. Pouring yep. rain. Driving when it wasn't pouring rain. <laughs> where were you? Surfside. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, Pat, Pat said the boring looks It looks like it was right to me. It looks right. Because I was Bill. looking at the borings they did and it was right in line with the wetlands. It, it wouldn't have surprised me if Bill had been over the years. You know, it's just, no, it, it definitely it's has. It's been a few. It's been. I'm sure it is. Yeah. But I don't know if that matters. So I have to get up to The problem is. Well, the guy was going to buy the land said that it couldn't be built, so we passed on it. Now this guy's buying it. She, she really yeah, huh? You betcha. No, no, no. I said I agree with you, um, but but uh, one part of it. Yep. Yep. Well, there's also an issue about uh, Coastal Bank. The, um, Coastal Bank? Yeah. Yeah. And actually, Coastal Banks on ponds of fresh water are even more restricted than they are. Hey, Pat. Yeah. I want to have a couple of um, We want to talk about some meeting times. But then the question is the Coastal Bank is in, in front. And these Coastal Bank is back. Okay. So, which. Excuse me. 
You know, oh, it's wild. It's me. It's 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 real. Wild. Hello. <laughs> If anybody wants to have a conversation, take it to the hall for the next 10 minutes. Okay? Thank you. Um, so we do have 10 minutes. We can't open a, a hearing until the time that's prescribed on here. And I've got Carter at 7.30. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. So while we're waiting for that, a couple of things have come up that we could discuss as a commission. Okay. The first one is meeting times or, or meeting days that we meet. Yeah. So, Paul is going to have an issue with times that we meet um, with his new s schedule. So, he can do Mondays, but Wednesdays are going to be difficult for him to hit all the time. So, it's a discussion we want to have or think about that we can change our meeting times to Monday nights as opposed to Wednesday. Going back to where it used to be. Carol is. Does another board? I don't think another board does meet. Board of Health. Just the Board of Health? I think so. Well, they've only got three members. They can meet in a smaller room. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, he's right. Okay. Yeah, right. Um, I'm, just, I'm just throwing this out there for, for folks that are here tonight. Um, you know, we, we could have issues where we're down a member or something else. And um, so just thinking about that whether or not it works for does it work for the rest us, of it us? also has to work for Carol Pat we don't really care yeah, about really we don't <laughs> he's a short less. timer lame duck uh, well, well a he's, he's, he's staying around <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean lame no seriously duck. so Mondays, Mondays versus fine. a Wednesday um, is something we should think about now we've already got meetings booked out for a couple of weeks for a month anyways right um, you. Yeah, a lot of times holidays end up on Monday, I so we're going to have to be booked right. down the road, you know? I have one for July 5th. What's that? Sunset. Yeah. Okay. Well, but that, that is a good point. Monday nights with the holidays can be a little challenging. Yeah, so we'll just have to be proactive about it, that's all. I, I, we, we went to a, like a strict first and third because Penny kept trying to move the dates around depending on her vacations. <laughs> if we try to go around her vacations, we'll never have meetings. Um, I'm housebound. Well, I guess the real God. question is, all, right. all worth changing. Yeah, exactly. This is, your yeah, really this is your really chance to uh, <laughs> get rid of me. All right. Move it to Friday night. And I'm so does that here. have to be, can we make that decision or does that have to be no, blessed no, by somebody? No. no okay, we, cool. We do and we All don't right. have to do it tonight, but I think yeah. we have to give that a little bit yep. of thought and see whether we can um, do it. Yeah. make okay. that work. All right. Well, we should think about it for the next meeting. We're, by the we're time, while we continue July. things, right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Try to take a look at a calendar as well and see what that means. Yeah. All right. But would we still do the first and third? I, that's, I think that's good. That was, I think we want to brought us that idea. Might want to check mm -hmm. with what health nights they do it. They might, I don't know if they're first and third or second and fourth. Okay. It was last week, so it was this week. I know that when we're not going to meet outside of town hall. No, that that's really tough. Yeah. That's a good that's thing about, secretary. I, you know, Pat was the one who suggested the first and third instead of we used to go every other week. Yeah. And the, the good thing about that is it gives you some buffer if you do have a holiday. Right. You can switch to the second one. Yeah. Right, yeah. 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 The only, there are two Monday holidays the rest of the year. That's Labor Day and Christmas. Okay. Wow. Mm. Thank you. Well, you're overqualified. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's. By the time we get to the next meeting, let's be prepared to vote that. Okay. Um, all right. That sounds good. Um, another one. We did. Uh, Troop Seven finished up the trail between Indian Trail and Old Gannett Road, yes. and uh, that's one that he has a chance to get out there and take a what? take a hike on that. It's it's nice. It goes at the pictures you said. Yeah. I mean, unbelievable job. Yeah. Those guys are great. Terrific. Um, and uh, DPW came out and picked up a few things that they had hauled out of the woods, and it's looking good. And then I'm going to spend a little time with um, our volunteers on mar marking new trails because they've got a couple mapped out that they want to take a walk on and see if they can start clearing some. The Higgins McGowan's yeah. area, they'll yep. be great up to the cow pipes. Yep. Yeah, they'll be great. So they're out there chomping at the bit to get things going. And uh, 
Penny and I can keep our town engineer on board. <laughs> we'll, uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's all going to happen this fall. Okay. I, I promise you that. Or and then Penny's done a pile of work on our um, conservation restrictions. We had a meeting. Actually, you want to you? Uh, no, we had a meeting <coughs> yesterday because Frank and I we we had a few questions on the CRs, and we had had a really nice discussion with Scott McFadden from Wild Wildlands to do some add-ons and to tweak the CRs a little bit. So at the moment. We're just waiting for Brendan, town attorney, to fi finish his, his review. And when they come back from him, I believe the signatures are done, the selectmen, CONCOM, and then it goes to the state. And then, so we actually would like to get it to the state as soon as possible. The reason being the state is backlogged, like getting close Maybe to a year. A year. That they're going to sit in the queue. Wow. So we want to get them up there as quick wow. as we can. So um, for anybody that doesn't understand, when we acquire land through with community preservation money, the town's bound to put conservation restrictions on that property, and it's a lengthy process. And we also need to f have a third party that's willing to monitor those conservation restrictions and so ultimately we decided on Wildlands Trust and, and the, at the last town meeting monies were approved for Wildlands Trust to hold those conservation restrictions and then we have to tweak them out and some of the things that Penny and I spent time on were like at Appleton Field we we're hoping that that would be might be a possibility for a larger community garden and if we wanted to have a shed maybe water on the site some things like that. We want fencing for the garden, um, make sure that all those sort of things would be allowed. In, in other cases, um, the use of different vehicles, um, if we decide to do some light forestry harvesting or firewood or something like that, that equipment could be used for that type of purpose. Um, nothing. Yeah, not public use. We don't want people driving equipment. around, we don't want motorcycles, but passive use including uh, mountain bikes could be could be done on these trails so it was just a discussion of tweaking out some of the the details of, of these um, we even talked about the possibility that there might be um, a place where um, either a high school outing group or the Boy Scouts or something might be able to have some uh, camping area at certain oh, times. Oh, like they do down in Plymouth and stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's, not, it's not a campground. Just ground. small. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just small we're looking. But we do have some it's a nice, idea. nice acreage that yep. could be used for that. So, And these folks, you know, they, they're a nonprofit group and, and fairly substantial. They're taking on more and more of these small trusts that are dissolving. And they're taking over the stewardship of those properties. And they're doing it with other towns. And what we put into these conservation restrictions now will be how they... Um, help guide that there won't be changes to this property for years to come. So we want to make sure that the template for this is correct. You mm. know, over time their boards could change or their views could change a little bit and we want to make sure that the structure set up the things that yep. we the things that we think we might want to do. We're not going to do them tomorrow obviously. Yep. But, but look maybe down the road. Down the road, you know, yep. so we want the, the possibility there for, for us to do it. You know, without having to go through a lot of filing with it and so forth. Right. So it's it's um uh just just sort of those sort of things we're, right. we're but we're yeah. we're getting a step closer. It's a yeah kind of an arduous process, but we're we're getting there. Yep. We got about two more minutes. <laughs> One more minute. Um, but we th we're still going to go back later on to other administrative items. Sure. Later on, yeah. What, yep. what, one other thing, too, about the Toll Brothers. Yep. Um, yep. I was we have uh, the wetland oh. hearing on but that is June 21st, but there's going to be a joint stormwater well, meeting with the planning board on the Toll Brothers project. Yeah. On It's going to be a Thursday night, so hopefully we can get as many of us as possible on a Thursday night, July 13th. That has to be... 
advertised the banner yeah. flown over the beaches yeah, yeah. has um has posted it and then we'll put it on the website town website our website and then um when is so it july 19th 13th 13th a thursday night and it is a second stormwater meeting we could have it on our night and planning board could join us and is, that's going to be is a that going to be the safety. whole meeting uh for us it is um they'll have a regular planning board meeting but we'll just be there for that piece of it do we know what time for are we going to be first i'm not sure okay. for what piece of it stormwater Oh, with the tow brothers. Tow okay, I thought we were going to do an environmental. We're one. doing our. We're going to have a hearing at the next meeting. Okay, okay, okay. But the stormwater Sorry. piece is going to be okay. a joint. Yeah, uh, I got you. At the public safety. Is uh, I got you. Stormwater. Are we doing the twenty-first one at the public safety? No. No. We're not. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we can open this hearing. Um, on June 7, 2016, at 6.45 p.m. Can, is there any way we can do these two together? No. Do we? There is a, the 21st. What's that? Is it Carter continued? <coughs> Carter? No, no, that's Surfside. Oh, that's where we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Oh, we already opened this, yeah. Thanks, Carol. Saying. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to jump into the next hearing. Good evening. <laughs> so we're doing lot 9A, Surfside Road. Yes. Um, okay. So my friend Solomon, Kevin R. Consulting, um, and uh, Steve Casaro, Steve as well, uh, for the Potters. Um, so there are uh, two, uh, two separate applications. Um, so this one is for lot 9A on Surfside Road, uh, which um, the engineering department has gave us an address on um, one is 70 this this particular lot is, is lot is number 72 Surfside Road uh, this lot is um, you don't really know where it is but it's almost down the end of Surfside Road on the right hand side uh, before you get to Seagate um, it borders um, you know the houses that are along the seawall to the east and the Koshka Pond uh, to the west um, the lot is currently a vacant lot um, it's basically mostly a lawn area. Um, there's some brush in the back, um, and then a small area where it, it, um, it turns into the infrastructure pond in the rear. There is a, um, a paved driveway, uh, a paved curb cut, that basically straddles the lot line as it is now, between uh, 70 and 72. Um, there's, so there's a few um, resource areas here. We have the um, the salt pond, the tidal salt pond, the, the structure pond. Um, we have land subject to coastal storm flowage, um, okay. elevation 14, and we also are on a barrier beach, which this whole this whole peninsula is basically considered a barrier beach. Um, so we're proposing um, a single family home uh, that we be, will be up on tiles. Uh, we have the top of pile at basically elevation 15. Uh, the average grade of the lot goes from anywhere from Back by the pond starts at about almost four and comes up to the street. It's almost uh, elevation nine, approximately nine um, in the uh, So we're proposing a single family home, uh, like I said, up on piles with a, uh, a skirt surrounding the uh, piles underneath uh, that will be breakaway during large storm events and will allow the passage of uh, 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 any storm flows or any um, uh, overwash or um, <coughs> the, flow of the, uh, the airborne sand as well pass through the pilots. And break away. And so the and first floor away. is bro, first floor is approximately two feet above that. So the first floor is about elevation 17. Um, and all the work is outside the 50 foot buffer to uh, the pond. Um, and we're closing a seashell driveway. So there's actually a, um, there's no, there's no new, um, there's actually a decrease in pavement area uh, from the locks. So I'm gonna take out the uh, the Bitcoin Drive, eighteen minutes very presently. Um, that's really about it. How, Any? how far back are you supposed to be from the coastal bank of the pond back? Um, we have jurisdiction within a hundred, but uh, fifty no touch. Um, there's a couple of resource areas that um, the two wetland scientists 
disagreed on a bit. I mean, I, I think that um, with Lucas, Tom Liddy believes there's a little bit of bordering vegetated wetland on the edge of the pond, which would maybe push the, um, the 50 foot back a couple of feet. Um, and let's see. Yeah. He was out there yesterday and yeah. he checked the flags and the flags were, you could look at it at the end of the pond or the vegetation, but it, I mean, I don't believe it makes any difference as far as performance standards. Right. So. Well, I know John Zimmer took soil samples between the flags and in that brush area and the soils weren't high. Oh, so. he, he found some that were and some that weren't. Okay. But it's, I mean, it's a matter of a few feet and it's bordering, whether it's the edge of the pond or it's bordering, I don't think it's going to make much difference. Okay. So you're, you're you have some question about the wetlands lined on this? Well, the, the flagging was good, but John Zimmer was calling that the edge of the pond. And when Tom went out there, he said, well, there's a little area that the soils may be, you know, hydric soil. So he was, you know, willing to call it bordering vegetative wetland. But it's a matter of this much. Both of them have a 50 foot buffer. Okay, so. So is this outside the buffer? Um, if it isn't, it's a couple of feet in. But I mean, we I think you've measured from you've measured from the flags too. The closest flag, the yeah. flag you have is 52.1 feet. Right. Structure. The the wording is from the pond, but if it's from the flag, then it's fine. It's 50 feet outside. What is the setback from the street? Could he bring the house forward two feet? Well, he may not may not need to if. Yeah. Well, but if he's could he if he had to? I don't know. Well, uh, no, I'm right on the front yard setback line. Start at the front. Start okay. At the front. Well, we'll have to get that. Or is get the mitigation? Yeah, Go. Does is that answer your, your question? Honey? Yeah, I'm. I'm okay. At the moment. Is the coastal bank on the ocean side at play? Uh, there's there's nothing between the house and. You know, I mean, maybe the seawall, if you want to call that um, the beginning of it. But the back is really a pond bank. It's a salt pond, and it has a bank. That's well, well, before we go any further there, it's a brackish bank. So is it subject to salt water um, regulation or freshwater regulation? From the ocean side, it's subject to land subject coastal storm flowage. Okay, yeah, but from the, the pond thing. side. From the pond side, it's a 50 foot buffer from the edge of the resource area, which could either be called edge of pond, bank, or bordering vegetative wetland. But the flagging was where the closest point of a resource area was. But if we're calling the, correct me if I'm wrong, we discussed this yesterday, but if we're calling the, the bank on the pond side fresh water, then those regulations are more formative than salt water, correct? But are they the same 50 feet? It's it's a bank holding a body of water in there and it's yeah. brackish. So yeah. I, I it's don't, a title. Yeah. It's a title. Yeah. It's a title. Right. We, more or less, it's controlled by the tidal gate, you know, that feeds into the river. Well, yeah. I think that's been removed. I think that... Yeah, that's gone now. But, well, it's no, there it's if they need it, but they don't raise it. They're not supposed to use that anymore. It's the just The tide's supposed to come and go from that pond. So it is tidal. I was looking at it and it was flowing under. It was flowing pretty good on the Hadley Road. Mm. There was a... I'm was sure it, it doesn't get a nine foot tide like it does in the harbor, but mm. it probably gets... Right. I mean, I guess it would probably be a... Three or four foot yeah, I, I live right down the street from it. So yeah, yeah um, the all right. So we're we're going to say that it's a saltwater bank, and we're going to say the saltwater bank is fifty feet. Yeah, I mean it's the performance standards that you have to meet that are the concern. If it mm -hmm. were a, a shellfish area, it would be different. If it mm -hmm. were a fisheries area, it's different. But it's mostly based on meeting the performance measures for flood control, um, storm damage, that kind of stuff, so. Just want to note that yeah, there's a lot of resources. Lisa, there. Pat, and, and I were out there yeah. in the driving rain, rain. and cold. <laughs> it was miserable yesterday. The whole thing is <laughs> it's much nicer today. <laughs> you're, you're, it's in a resource. The whole thing is in a resource area. Right. Right. Is a resource area, so. Okay. okay. Thank you. Richard? Oh, you've answered my question, sorry. No questions. Yes, sir. I'm all set. 
Pat. Um. Uh, yeah, I mean, on the notice of intent application, there's a few more boxes that have to get checked. I don't think Barry Beach was checked in the thing that was sent in to DP or to us. So those boxes could be checked off. Um, and on the resource areas, I mean, there's four or five buffer areas, and, you know, we could just check those off. Um, Pat, when you, when you say that these areas haven't been checked off, so when this filing goes before DEP and they issue a number, they review that application and they look to see what the applicant says is there for resource right, areas. Right. So when those boxes aren't checked off correctly, does that impact the way the DEP issues a number? Um, if it were in a resource area, um, which I uh, can actually bury a beach, we ask the applicant to send that information into DEP. We, we review it and we hold our hearings with that resource area in mind. But yes, it's a good point. DEP should be notified on that. I, I mean, it, it seems to me like that's fairly critical as they review this. They're going to look at a checklist and they're going to say, wow, this one's not significant right. or this one has more significance. Right. So, well, it, under the barrier beach, it says indicate size of coastal beaches and or coastal dunes. So yeah, it, it seems like it would be relevant. Yeah. And that goes for both projects? Yeah. There are no features of doom, so those would be zero. But yeah, I, I, right. I think yeah, it's. Sorry about that. Yeah, I, I just saw it this yesterday, yesterday, too. Cost of but I mean, that, that would be something that we want DEP to have in their hands to take a look at. Okay. It is Barry Beach. All right. And then. Um, Lucas, and for folks that don't know, Lucas Environmental, the town of Situate, the applicant has their wetlands consultant and their engineer to look at this, and then the town of Situate hires an outside consultant to review the resource areas as well. So Lucas Environmental is the firm that we hired to look at these wetlands lines and determine whether those are correct. Did Lucas also comment on um, other resource areas? Do they do they have a comment or or uh, things did. like the like this being a barrier beach and the significance? Do they have comment on those? Right. He um, he verbally gave to us. He's only out there yesterday, so he did say, "Yep, barrier beach. Yeah, uh, it's a you know salt pond um, buffer. It is a boarding vegetated wetland because." Although John Zimmer didn't have hydric soils, he did, but the line didn't change. He right. just did on either side. So well, yeah. you know, driving a line is is sort of a difficult thing. Everybody's got you're looking at shading right. in a soil that can be arbitrary at best. But right. my concern would be more to make sure that that Lucas also looked at all the the uh, resource areas and make sure that they're correct as well. Yeah, he also did uh, soil samples on the lawn area. He did, you know, I did some and he did some right. on that area. It looks but these like are small, these are borings to like 18 inches to see if there's hydric down, soils. Uh, we get down to 20. Yeah. Okay, but this isn't looking to see if there's any fill or changes like that on the material. Right. All right. Uh, Frank, may I ask yeah, you? Let me just, yeah. um, so, so I guess my, my point is that I'd like to know that Lucas reviews all those pieces as well and concurs with the different resource areas that this these projects are in the same ones as the applicant um, right I mean verbally we got that from him yesterday but well, we're going to get a letter yeah okay. okay Bill um, I don't know even if we can ask why these are projects are being considered separately but if they were being considered as one, would this trigger stormwater? Uh, it, it's that's a good question, but right now it's currently lawn and it's going on pilings, so you're looking at square footage of um, disturbance. Disturbance, yeah. Um, you know, under the stormwater bylaw, we're looking. It looks more at rain stormwater than coastal mm. flowage. Mm. So okay. 
the, the reason for them being separate was not to get out of Stonewall. Mm -hmm. Mere, I don't know, to, I mean, they're under private ownership now, both of them. So if one gets sold, we don't know some intent tied to the other, the other property. Makes Someone sense. wants to build yeah. a house, you know, they don't want to be tied. If you have one with some intent, it would be, I mean. Yeah, they are separate. They're separate houses. They're separate right. projects, right. yes. So it's, I mean, we have a, one or two maybe prospective buyers, but they could be, you know, um, you know spec houses. So. Mm -hmm. um, that was not the intent was to get out of mm -hmm. I don't, there's no septic on here, so I'm assuming you're connecting it's the sewage. Yeah. It's we it's two yeah. Okay. Is there anything else? No, I mean, it's, it's um, V zone, I mean, it's A zone, but they're going to be gone pilings, which is what we would prefer over a foundation. Like that. The zone is across the street, it goes about 30 or 50 feet. Um, west of the seawall, then it turns into an AO three feet depth across the roadway, and then right down about the middle of Surfside is where it changes to an AE in the back. Okay, and that's typically how these barrier beaches work. And what's the requirement with the new FEMA maps? What's the elevation? 17? No, it's an AE 14. It's AE 14. Hmm. So it would have to be 15 from the bottom floor. Yeah, it's pretty safe. Seventeen to the floor. Didn't you say seventeen? And we don't have a yes. We don't have any piling plans or anything like that yet for this project. Yes, there was a set yeah. plan. There yeah. is. Do you uh, want to see it for me? A first floor and then piling built. Okay. I don't need it right now. Oh, okay. Once again, it was, it was a it was a spec house built. Um, both both footprints are the same. Um, so you know, they're they're identical houses that they have now. Okay. But that just means if someone in private ownership wanted to buy one and they wanted to change the Thanks. change the footprint, they certainly could. It's not close to the question. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, do we want to add anything else right now? We're going to open this up to. Um, no. So is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak to this or have any questions? No. Interesting. Okay. So do you want to wait for Lucas's we'll letter to come? In, in the DEP comment on the barrier okay. beach. Yeah. Right. And I want to see the copy of their letter back to DEP um, correcting sure. the... I'll copy you guys and send you guys a notice of the guys. <coughs> Okay. okay. All right. So, how long do we need to um, continue it? You think this is going to be a couple of weeks or a month or? or uh, Probably wrap it up at the twenty first. I mean, we're just need Lucas's letter. Yeah, Lucas will be done this week. Toll Brothers is at seven. What do you want me to do? Just, just so you know, we're going to have a hearing for Toll Brothers for those units at seven p.m. on. The twenty first. We could be here at nine thirty or what's the other alternative? The first week July fifth. Um July fifth. Sunset, isn't it? Sunset is at six thirty. No falls yeah. before this year. <laughs> and nothing's fun here. We get the short shift all the time. Is it gonna be quick or is it gonna be long? We don't know. No. Or I'd try and squeeze them. Put them in. I could do them July 5th at 625 before sunset. Take it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm looking at Frank. I mean, the, the other thing that we didn't, dis we are going to eventually get to discussing because we're going to have some of these hearings. Yeah. We block out a big piece of time for I something know. like Toll Brothers. I know. And then they continue. We all sit here and wait. I, I hear you, I, but I don't know what else to do. Well, we're going to make some changes in that, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. so before we continue that, I just, uh, just want to mention there's been four um, documents that have been asked to be part of the record. Okay. Um, so For what? They've been emailed to you, and then we had a public records request. There were two from an attorney's office, Stephen Gard. There's one from... Fangian, McDonald, Welsh, Sachitelli. Um, I think Brendan has sent something in, and then there were comments from uh, Rebecca Haney. 
that can be entered into the record. Okay. And then I know that you guys have asked for uh, um, copies of what's been submitted. If there's any of that you haven't received yet, let me know. You might not have the Rebe Rebecca Haney. She's uh, Coastal Zone Management. Okay. I didn't see that. Yeah, no, that was an email and it came in, but I, I figured I showed it okay. to them, so I should show it to everybody else. Okay. Um, we'll maybe roll the dice to the 21st at that. So, what time do you want me to get them? 8 30. 8 o'clock. Well, make it 8 o'clock. I mean, you know what? Let's. We have Toll Brothers on for seven. Yeah. Yeah. Make it seven o five. You might sit if they now. they continue, which you're could good. Be. They continue. If they okay. don't continue, you may be here. So yeah, you understand your. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they won't be continuing. They'll be in that night, but we we're limiting it to just the wetland discussion, so it might be a half hour. Yeah. Like we'll All right. We'll hour. make it seven o five. The schedule yeah, is well, fictional. I make a this motion a that schedule. we continue Carter Lot Nine A Surfside to June 21st at 7.05. June? Yeah. June 21st. Um, there's somebody in the back that had their hand up. Um, I do. Hi, uh, a minor of 65 Surfside Road. I, I and your name is? Carolyn DePisa. Hi. Thank you. And I'm sorry I came in late. But um, you just mentioned something about uh, rain, ro normal like rain water and what, whatnot. No. We have a huge problem right now on Surfside, um, and I've called DPW a number of times, I've talked to Mike Green, and since they hooked up to town sewer, we, I have video on my phone of the water that is now collecting from the corner of our lot where the tennis court is all the way down to almost where the cluster boxes are. And it's like not just a little water. It is like a like water slide, like if you will a canopy lake. That's how bad it is right now. And I'm not sure how I think it developed it, it's only developed since we put in town sewer, and I have no idea why. But we already have a water, normal standing rainwater issue. And I, I really don't know whether this will impact it one way or the other. But we, we already have definitely an issue on Surfside Road as far as flooding, normal flooding from rainwater without even considering when the ocean decides to come over the street. So are you saying that there's standing water on these Could properties? No, in front of them. It's, it's it on goes, the street. Yes, it's because on the street. it goes from the corner of our lot where the tennis court lives, all the way down now to in front of the cluster boxes, which on. does include these lots. Okay. And it's, it's gotten chronically worse, like over time. And and it, it, it and the only I've been there twenty odd years, and it, I can honestly say that since we hooked up the town sewer, it, it's gotten worse and worse and worse. And I I really don't know why. Um, and as I said, uh, you can talk to Mike Green. I've called a number of times. We're talking about catch basin. They're talking about, well, who owns the property? Where can we put in a, um, like, they put in a culvert further down on Surfside, the crossing like 73, mm -hmm. which when, you know, during the winter storm, <coughs> it does help. It, the water drains into it, and I believe it goes out into the squash pit on that end. So we, I mean, I would love to see the same thing happen in front of our house because we are at the low part of the street. If you drive down Surfside Road right now in front of my house, there is four inches of standing water and it will not evaporate for a week. And yesterday, I, I'm not kidding you, I waited for a car to come up, look through the street, took a video and it was like, Whoo! and it's, it's, it's a chronic problem now. And I'm not necessarily saying this is gonna make it any worse or any better, but we have a problem now. Yeah. You, th these, thank you. These are a little bit hard to see from here. The lines aren't that clear. What's the topography? Um, it basically runs from Surfside Road. Um, it comes up the curb, and then it um, and then it does the grade move down back towards the Pond. So um, there is there's a catch basin in this corner here, and there's a drain, as one mentioned, there's a drain that goes is an easement on our property that discharges in the back here. Uh, 
as she said, this side of Surfside Road is it's it's is pretty much dead flat. But probably my estimation will probably because I've seen the I've seen the puddle up by the tennis courts. Okay, but the water from these lots is heading back towards. It's heading back towards the pond. And that's what I would have assumed looking at it, but I just okay. But I, I think what maybe it happened when they did the sewer over is that they missed a low point and there's a catch basin because like I said, it's so flat. If it's you know that flat, you miss it by an inch, and you're going to have a puddle 20 feet away, which is I think what happens there. Okay. Um, anybody else? So the, the information that was sent in, is that that's available to everybody that's here? Yep. Okay. All right. So we have a motion to continue? I did. We did. Okay. Seven five, yeah. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Great. So do you want to open up the other one? Or? Yes. Okay. Um, so I think we have the, we're going to have the same issues again with the filing. Um, if you've checked off the yes, same yes i did i checked the same boxes so it'll be the it'll be the the same we'll you know commit to the 21st this one is a little bit further away from the uh the salt marks than the um the salt pond and the other one um it's more centered on the lot um but um but yeah if we get the um we'll get the letter from um uh, lucas and i'll get the revised notice and intent application to dep and to uh, to that as well okay so go ahead. Can just say anything else you want to give us on that one? That's, that's really about it's the same. Like I said, the same product, the same footprint. It's um, you know as I said, the grade the grade does this. It's a, it's a curve stone there. Um, then from the curve, the lawn area does it. Um, it goes back uh, to the to the pond. What's the distance this time from the resource area? Uh, this one is. 61. 61.6. Yeah. Okay. From that, from that particular resource area. I mean, yeah, right. Okay. That, that's yeah, what I was meaning. Yeah. Resource area is this one. They have, right. they have, they have about each other. So. But it's not the only resource area. No. Inside. But he knew what I meant. The pond. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. right. It's in the Barrier Beach, and it's in the Minnesota the Coastal. There's no okay. measurement to the Barrier Beach. <laughs> it's on it. All right. <clears throat> Penny. No. Uh, uh, one thing I would like um, just to throw out there before we continue on here, is that these are both approved. I actually, it looks like there's quite a bit of vegetation behind this one. Is there as much behind the other one? I'm just wondering if, you know, we should be asking where it is in the hot <coughs> hundred, and I know, but it is under our jurisdiction for any more plantings out back there. Yes, this one has, has a lot. What it does, it's an old design. Well, we what, what about the other one, nine A? Was is there as much? I put that plant away. Probably not as probably not as much. It's not as thick. It does get a little thick on the corner here. Um, yeah. But it's it's um. There's probably I'm just looking at there's probably more on this number seventy surfside. I've been out there, but I I didn't really look at. The width of the vegetation. Right. It's, hard to, it's hard to tell when you when you're up there if you just look in the bushes. Yeah, it I is, know. It is kind of a low lying. Right. It's no more than, you know, six or eight feet high. Right. Okay. All right. I really don't well, have any. Good. Good. Nothing more. Good. I'm assuming we're it's just going to. No questions. So, one of the things that maybe we should have on the table is depending on the outcome of these hearings, um, certainly it's in a sensitive Plans. area and Oftentimes when projects like this are done, we look for some additional vegetation or, or plantings or things to protect um, a, a resource area. You know, right now it's a lawn. Right. And if it wasn't mowed as a lawn, that would just keep growing up. Right. Um, vegetation. The vegetation would. So oftentimes when we look at some of these, uh, granted, you know, the disturbance is minimal with the pilings, but whether there's any improvements that could be made to some of the plantings of vegetation uh, along that. We could do plantings or we could just, you know, we could limit a, you know, I'm sure that this vegetation that if you didn't mow it would just overcome the lot. Right, but uh, we don't want to see Phragmites <coughs> grow back yeah. up and, yeah. uh, and all that sort of thing, so we want to think about. I'm just thinking about maybe a no mow area if we wanted to do something like that, you know, limit the mow yeah. area to, you know, uh, maybe a, you know, 20 or 25 foot setback. You know, just leave that, let it go in its natural state. Sure. 
Okay. Well, I think that's something we should just put on the table. So if it winds up in the orders, it's it's yes. been sure. been brought to your attention, and we'll think about that. We'll look at what Lucas has for a report, and we can we can kind of hash that one around a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, is there um, anybody in the audience that would like to speak to this? Okay, I'm going to make a motion to continue Lot 10 to Hillside Road to June 21st at 710. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank gentlemen. Thank you. I, I get it. It's really thick. There's a lot of rows of goods. So that's good. That's yeah. Good. And there's a, a lot of uh, Fragmite and just really. But I wonder how it is. Yeah. <sighs> uh, we were walking through it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On June 7th at uh, 7.45 p.m. at the Town Hall, the Citra Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter. 131, Section 4 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Citra Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Welby Builders, LLC, slash Paul Sharon, to delineate the wetlands on property located at Lot 1, 90 and Vinyl Road, Situate. Abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Oh, Jesus. Um. Could be as well. Yeah. Is this the same guy from the No, this is Doug Sharon. Oh, no. Good. Oh, Paul Mayor from the Sharon Company, representing the owners and the applicants for the application of the Conservation Commission. We have filed what we call an handwrite application. The purpose of that is one purpose only, and that's to <coughs> commission review the weapon line. Last <coughs> one that is submitted to them in this area, and one that will buy the street on um, the Colorado Road. The property contains 15.5 acres of land, and the weapons that were met were to the um, uh, uh, this side of the property, there's a small weapon here, which is which was caused by the runoff in the parking lot for the Hadley School um, buses. They park here and they have a pipe discharging water out of this property. That's, that's why that weapon was there. This weapon up here is basically due to soils and the groundwater and the vegetation. And the uh, slope of the land is such that it's, it's from this level, it's, it's going in the easterly direction down into the salt marsh, which is quite a ways down at the bottom of the hill. But um, the property is owned by the Curtises. Um, they, they have a couple of years in the watch. Lot 1 is the one that's under green with uh, Wellington Builders. Lot 1. They own the weapons on the property. They got the purpose of this application is to have the um, uh, two weapon resource areas confirmed by the commission. I think for that, I'll, I'll make a presentation if there are any questions. Uh, uh, these these were like made by Brad Holmes, and they have not been reviewed by the commission at this point. Okay. Penny? Um, did, did we have Lucas go out there? Uh, no, Brad Holmes. He just submitted a proposal today. So we sent him the information, we sent him the anrad. Yeah. And he just got back to us with a um, yeah. price on that. So he could get out there before the next meeting, before the 21st. So? Uh, we went and uh, took a look at that property yesterday. Um, it is a substantial piece of property. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't think really we're going to be doing much of anything until we uh, are able to establish the wetlands. And then we can go from there. Paul, is this the whole parcel, or is there there a second parcel up toward the back, or is this the whole piece? 
They own 29 acres. This is oh. what they have of it. Oh, okay. So this is the only piece that. This is the only piece of it. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, rest of it's primarily. There's salt marsh at the bottom of the hill. There's tidelands. Yeah. And there's there's uh, quite a bit of water between here and there. Okay. And is there a, a property line that's been. Yes, this, this um, property was separated into okay. two lots. It was approved by the planning board. Okay. We went through a uh, A and R process. This is lot one that has 15 acres, and I think the other one was about 14 acres. Okay. Thanks. Richard? I'm good. Yeah. Paul, no questions? Lisa? Nothing. Pat, do you want to add anything to this? No, I think Carol can um, scan this and um, tomorrow and get get this out and you get Lucas out there to check it. Okay. Anybody in the audience with questions for this? Mm -hmm. Just a comment. Sure. Uh, hi, Megan Mulcahy. I'm a resident on Townsend. Mm -hmm. um, back, my house is right there on the back side of the site. Um, sure. And just concerned about the effect of the development might have on water infiltration on our properties going forward. Most of the houses on this side of, in this from the cul-de-sac to Sedgwick take on water um, with moderate rains, um, not even necessarily very heavy rains. And so just putting it out there that we are concerned about any pushing of, changing the scape of, the, of that land and how that might affect. Okay, so yeah. just to, so you understand, what we're having right now is what they call an ANRAD. And oftentimes someone that's considering a piece of property first wants to be certain of any wetlands or issues on the property. So what they do is they come before the commission with this plan and say this is where we believe the wetlands lines are. And then the town will hire a consultant to go out and review what their uh, environmental scientists said, make sure that they agree on these lines. and. Basically, that's what happens. Uh, anything beyond that, any proposed development or change to the property would be another hearing. And at that point, we'd be looking at that depending on the, s the scope of the work, the disturbance, what was built, then things like stormwater, drainage, uh, all those sort of things come into play mm -hmm. depending on the extent of the of the project. The, the town of Situate has some pretty elaborate, um, but but your point that, and, and I've walked this property as well, and I understand the topography and water flows downhill, um, so we do understand that, but at this point that's what we really want to first determine is are there any other wetlands or is this the extent of the wetlands. What it helps alleviate is questions later on about whether what should be developed or what sh what shouldn't be and and that's why we'll want to know that other issues like um, the absorbency of the water the permeability septic systems all that stuff comes into play when the owner or applicant makes a, a applies for that work so and the quote that the town just got for the engineer's report for the site, is the scope of that solely to determine the wetlands delineation at this point in time? Right. That's right. And a copy of those reports when they're done are available through town hall? Yep, through the conservation office. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Yep. 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 Um, I have a question. Sure. How do we determine if this is a national heritage? Uh, we can go online and check that. I don't know. I, I believe you guys mentioned that. In the, uh, yeah, you in should the have the map in the application. Yeah. And it wasn't, is, I'm assuming. No. No. The one National Heritage, they're looking for any endangered species. The other thing, too, Bill, is one there out there, our wetland person, he'll check the wetland line, but he'll also look to see if something looks like a vernal pool or if there's intermittent stream. So see. while he's out there, he'll. Gotcha. It's the priority habitat. That's the site. Yeah, but. Yes, sir. I'm going to follow up. Um, look like. And your name? I'm on 81 Townsend Road. Sure. So when it moves to that next stage, will the residents of Townsend Road be notified? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So the, and the process varies depending on 
the type of, of project. Mm -hmm. But if it's a larger development, oftentimes our planning board then becomes involved dealing with stormwater pieces. Maybe it's a subdivision. You know, it just depends on how the applicant decides to divide up this project. But it's a distance from those projects where a butter notification takes place. Um, and, you know, if from judging from who applied for this, um, you know, more than likely there'll be some sort of development planned and there'll, there'll be a lot of other things that happen that you'd have the opportunity to, to look at and be made aware of. So Frank, does the, um, the CONCOM need to sign off before they can go to the zoning board? They could do this a number of different ways, but but what they're right now, all they're asking is, do we agree with the wetland line? That's it. Gotcha. Yeah. Just the line. Yeah. There's there'll be lots more to happen if someone chooses to develop this property. If and by chance they stay more than 100 feet away from the wetlands, we won't be involved at all in the future. It would just be a planning board. But there's a good chance they'll get to within 50 feet of the wetlands. You know, as close as they can get, because you get more development done. Then we'd be involved and then there'd be a lot of notifications from us and the subdivision planning board will send it out to everybody. Um, let me just clarify one thing, Pat, with you. Um, I'm reading the environmental uh, consulting notes. They're saying that it's not in a priority habitat estimated area. It also says it does not contain a vernal pool, a certified vernal pool. Do we always go by the map on those? No, we don't. No, okay. No, but what he's saying is that, that Tom, Liddy, or, or whoever from Lucas will, will also walk the site. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I've, I've roamed around it pretty well. Yeah, but this says, you know, the site does not contain. We don't believe it. Yeah, okay. We have to confirm that, right. yes. He's right, and that's the process. Right. That's if the point. If it was a yep. certified one, they would have to report that when they submitted this. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Yeah, Ed Whalen. I'm at um, on Sedgwick 113. Sure. Uh, the same concerns with the water. It's, it, so you're just talking about the water delineation, but from, I've heard over the years they've tried to perk that land and it's never perked. So there's, there's probably a lot of groundwater that you're not seeing um, in that area because look, we're getting a lot of water in all of our basements. And, and so we're concerned about the water coming towards us. Sure. With, you know, I've heard upwards of 16 to 18 houses being put back there. You've got to put 16 to 18 uh, septic systems in and, and, and drainage for all the roads that go there. So that water's going to go somewhere. And I've got a crazy system now with sand filter system, and my wife calls it a science project. <laughs> <laughs> it pumps and everything. So sure. It takes up my whole yard now, and, and it's doing a good job. But we're not sure what's going to happen with that. Right. Well, it, it is a concern, and again, that's why the town's adopted things like our stormwater bylaw. Um, we look at the different impacts that these things could happen. If if there's a road, if there's houses, if there's if there's more septic, um, but unfortunately, at the moment, all we're they're asking us for is where is the wetland line, and can that be um, predetermined for future. Uh, project. So, you know, your concerns are well. You can understand why you you have that, yeah. but without having anything in front of us, it's really hard to to say. Um, so you're going to say this is where the line is, and then eventually the planning board. Or well, then with that you. with that information and that being determined, I would assume that the that this this applicant would be going back to Mr. Marabito and saying, design us. Um, figure out the best way for us to use this property and depending on how bad the soils are or how good the soils are that will determine to some degree how they can develop the site if if the soils are really poor and it's difficult to build septic systems and deal with drainage uh, obviously that complicates the development if the soils are really good um, then they can do other things with the property 
um, maybe be more aggressive. So sometimes having bad material there isn't the worst thing. Um, but, but you're right, any changes like that can adversely affect someone else. And we'll try to look at it to the best that we can um, under the bylaws that the town has um, established for those sort of things. So if, if this does all go forward, and then the it's places are put in, houses are put in there, is there recourse for us if we do start getting water, or what do we do then? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't think that's part of the discussion for time. No one's and proposed to build anything yet. <laughs> There's no yeah. proposal. Yeah. To the I mean, just I, in I general, I, we're very aware between us and the planning board. We're very aware of those things, and we're heightening our awareness of it. So we're trying to um, be very proactive in the way that we not only ad address the project in concept, but also in the construction process and post. So um, hopefully we're going to be able to address those issues. Mr. Marbito's the engineer. If he's the, if he's the one that designs it and stamps it and says it's not a problem, I guess he'd be the first <laughs> target. <laughs> You're right out there. Frank's your friend. He's calling you a target already. <laughs> Sorry. I guess the same goes for carpenters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, thanks. I just have a maybe I guess technical question. You indicated that I think what I heard you say was that if the um, they're not planning to develop outside or within 50 feet of the wetlands barrier, um, then it's not subject to your review. But if, if they stay a hundred feet away from the, our wetlands line, it would not be part of our purview, but it still would be part of the planning boards. Boy. And the planning board could then review whether possible water infiltration could happen. They absolutely would. Still would. That would be yeah. one of their Whoever main. does it has to comply with the storm water and handle all the water on the property. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a project of this size uh, uh, well, we uh, is know. likely to uh, Yeah, you have no idea the size. To it so, might uh, be two. It's been one house all these years. It might be two this time. We don't know. It, there is no project. If it's, it's, if it's a, 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 a project of a certain scale, then it will have to uh, conform to the stormwater regulations. All right. And part of that is not to shed any water off of the property. Okay. Great. Right. So, so we're going to continue this. To, we, how far out? Pat, how, f how much uh, time do you think for... Did he give you any idea when he'd get a chance to do it? like he'd get out there in the next two weeks. I, I would think we could probably do it. On the 21st? 21st. We have With a lot everybody on else? Make it July 5th. It's just it might be better, but, um, <sighs> but if we had to, we could do it. You want to stay and listen? Well, you're going to be at Toll Brothers anyways. Put it on for yeah. 21st. Come on. Yeah, which one? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I'd, I'd rather go ahead of him. I didn't offer you that. I, I did. <laughs> well, I could go 650. It's a wetlands line. Yeah, so Fine. 650. Yeah. I make a motion that we continue. I don't mean to sound well, like that's not a big deal, but it's not. 90 and vinyl to June 21st at 650. Second. You got your wish. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Thank you, 21st, folks. And what we're going to do then is basically look at our, the engineer, and he may have some deviation from these flags. Typically, what he'll go out and look to see where this wetlands person flagged it, he'll do his own tests. He'll mark it in a different place. Then Mr. Marabito would have to go back out and plot those changes, and then we'd have a map that showed us if these guys varied in, in, uh, so, in so, the, so does the independent third party that gets hired by the town supersede the the, con the builder? No, the typically then it, there's a discussion about that and uh, quite honestly I, I, I mean typically it's the way someone interprets some soils here. It, it, it usually winds but up being the difference of a few oh, feet. Like, yeah. Or something. I mean, I've walked this. It's, there's nothing out there that's real um, controversial that I would think. I mean, they look at vegetation and then this starts to give them an idea where they think they should do some auger holes. 
and then and those are basically a small soil sample and then they look at the shading in that soil to determine where they think there's hydric soils and when you start to look at that stuff I couldn't do it I'm not that good with colors um, but basically they're going to be splitting some some hairs more or less over where that is if there was something that someone had a big controversy over whether um, there was a, an intermittent stream versus um, a river or, or something like that we might be having another discussion but this is a, a wetlands that should be fairly easy to identify um, but we want to make sure I mean our our consultant is obviously look looking out for the interests of the town and and we've got good confidence in the fellow that's going out there to do that so Right. Okay. So thank you. Thank you very much. On Indian between Indian Trail and Old Gannett Road, the Boy Scouts just made a walking trail through the woods. Old Gannett. So when, if you're coming from Minot, going to North Situate. Old Gannett Road goes off towards Border Street, and there's a small opening about halfway down there on the right. And there should be a sign that says Hubble, or the other way to find it is to go in Indian Trail and sort of diagonally across from Wood Island Road or up a little bit, you'll see a post that says Hubble. And it's a pretty trail. Yeah. Yeah, great. Thank you. That's nice. Um, Bellio 17 Rebecca Road renovation. Bellio? Bolio? Sorry. Hi, how are you? On June 7th at 7.55 p.m. in the Town Hall, uh, the Situate Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700 Town of Situate Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Mary Bellio. Uh, uh, to renovate yes. a single family okay. dwelling on property located at 77 Rebecca Road, Situate. Abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Go ahead and give that to oh, Carol. Sure. Uh, my, first of all, my name is Jeffrey. Let's, let's just. The green cards. The green cards. Uh, certified green cards. Pieces. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I did not see that in the packet. First of all, um, let me identify myself. Sure. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Sill. Um, uh, Miss Folio, uh, Miss Folio um, had me stand in because she was away. Um, you know, in order to just let uh, the board know that we've made the notices, um, the notice of intent uh, to renovate, um, and. Um, you know that they've got their elevation certificate and they've filed the uh, building permit for the renovation. Okay. Um, but we can't yeah, open. Yeah, well, I was yeah. just going to say. Open. So, yeah. So unfortunately, part of opening this would be um, proof that those notifications went out to all the appropriate people. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I was under the impression that that had been sent out <coughs> by uh, uh, her cohabitant uh, Charlie Ruddy. Yeah. Uh, well, you bring typically you bring those to the first the opening yeah. meeting, okay. and then you've got that proof of mailing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so without those, we've advertised the meeting. Okay. To open, um, what we would, what we've done in the past is we've continued. Okay. Right. We well, we haven't opened. That. What's that? We have to re-advertise that they haven't been done. Right. Do you are you do you know that they've been um, whether they've advertised? Uh, yeah, and, and, yeah. I, yeah. Um, let me see what I have here. Yeah, well, what's the, <coughs> yeah. I mean, it has a list to add. That's the list, but yeah. do you know if anybody formally mailed those out? Yeah, I was told they were mailed out, but I would not provide it. So with yeah, I mean, basically, what you need to do is find out if they went out, and then let Carol or Pat know, and then we can either decide to. Don't know. We'd have to do that now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 It's either now. So or they got to re-advertise. 
Yeah. If if they haven't been done, then yeah. this is all. It needs needs to be redone. Right. Yeah. So, but if it if they have been done, then we can continue on. So my suggestion is that we try to open this, continue to the next meeting. If if none of that's been done, then that's just all but null and void. Another couple of weeks. Well, either way, I mean, that's we're here and ready. We yeah, we're ready. <laughs> he could notify them tomorrow, and then we could have another one for the twenty-first. Well, but it's up to you guys. Yeah. Well, if we don't continue it, then then it has to be at the next. If the notification's already gone out for this meeting, is there anybody here in the room for this? No, I can't. I'm actually the architect that designed. Yeah. I'm here for a totally different thing. I yeah. just happened to see my plans. Yeah. Um, I know and, the and client. Sorry, your name is? Oh, Heather Marshall. I, know that. Um, I have talked to the client three weeks ago while they were going to the building department to just verify the heights and the FEMA heights and everything. Um, and it sounded like the client had done all the steps. I had given them like all the different steps they had to take. So I'm yeah. pretty fairly certain they did yeah. mail those. Yeah, I'm pretty certain as well, and I apologize. I mean, I just kind of was filling in. I didn't really have a full scope of so what was going on. No good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say do a continuation, but yeah. um, I yeah. don't know until Okay. I'm pretty sure they <laughs> It's a lot to take on as a first time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to circle back with him. And again, I was just here in a, uh, the capacity of a fill-in for this evening. Sure. I, I just, I, I assume those had been uh, presented uh, or sent I'm, I'm willing to read this, open the meeting, continue it to the next one for the cards. If they weren't done, then you start from. Yeah, then you, yeah, yeah, you just all over. around go. Yeah. Again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So on June. Seventh at 2000, uh, 2017 at 7.55 p.m. the Town Hall, the Situa Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40, Massachusetts General Laws, and Section 30700, Town of Situa Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Mary Bilio to renovate a single family dwelling on property located at 77 Rebecca Road, Situa, but others and other interested parties are invited to attend. Do I have a motion to continue? Uh, yes, I make a motion to continue all oh, 77 Rebecca Road to June 21st at, I guess, they just all may have to sit and wait. Seven. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. That's a night that we're going to have a hearing on Toll Brothers. Yeah. So I might come back in that capacity because I'm very much against that whole situation over there. And, uh, you know. Well, we're not talking about it. I know, I know. Yeah, that's yeah. not. Yeah, I'm not going to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they already yeah, so, brought them. Yeah, so um, you need no, those. Yeah, you, yeah, you need the green cards, though, correct? The certified yes. mail pieces? Okay. Carol needs those. If they have them, they could bring them up tomorrow. The okay. Next day. Okay. Don't, you don't have to wait till the meeting. Okay. I will let them know that. Actually, yeah. don't. Get, yeah. they, they need bring to them get those to Carol. Yes, we, I'll, I'll make sure that happens. Okay. Okay, great. Thank, right. you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. What did I forget? This is an informal. This is a very conceptual and. And it. I'm not going to waste your time. I'm just going to go quickly. Six thirty, seven thirty. I know that's okay. I really, I really want this to happen. So, um, I live in seventeen. I'm Heather Marshall. I'm a local resident and uh, residential architect. You might see some of my plans come sure. through. Um, I have a very unique site where um, I've found out recently that pretty much all of my site is within the 50 feet of the freshland. I'm, I have a freshwater emergent wetland to my left. Um, and so we're getting ready to renovate because I am expecting my second baby and I run my business out of my home. And because I cannot go outside of my footprint, my office doesn't fit. So I've been looking at potentially doing a very small shed on the property, but because my entire property is within the 50 feet, I have nowhere to go. Where um, is it? What's I'm the address? 17 Nelson Road. Okay. Where's Nelson? It's right off of Hatherley. 
So I haven't done a survey yet. I have an environment. I do have an environmental engineer to come out and flag if if putting four pylons or four sonotubes into the ground would be okay. Um, but I haven't gone through those steps yet. Just do you have any even a simple plot plan? Heather? I do. I have a few things for you guys. Okay. The ladies prepared. So this is my land. So this line here is on the other side is the wetland. And I actually went on the Oliver. Um, I know it's not accurate, but just to show. Okay, so there's my lot here. And I know that this is, it can shift a couple right. feet, but 50 feet just going off the scale, it's pretty much my entire house. So, and the only land I have available is on the side. Um, so my idea was, and I know a lot of my neighbors are putting up these sheds and I've seen coop, little chicken coops like literally in the wetlands. I'm not going to do that. I want to do it sure. the, right, the right thing to do. Um, so I was proposing if I could do four sauna tubes into the ground, if I collected the rainwater um, in a gutter and had it drain into a rain barrel, which I can then use into my garden, which would be awesome. Um, would that be feasible? And if it could be feasible, then I would go through the, the, the right steps to getting a survey done. Well, you're one of the few that actually gets a permit for a shed, which is nice. <laughs> well, it's under, it's only 120 square feet. So sure. it's not even big enough to be, a, to get yeah. a permit. You don't, you don't need a building permit. permit. No, but, but the, the disturbance in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, you understand that. I do. I mean, I do this for a living, so I don't want to, um, you know, I want to do it the right way. And I'm also going to be running electricity and heating to it because it's going to be my office. And it's an office for one. It's not um, sure. commercial or anything. It's literally an artist studio. I just need my office for the baby. Because <laughs> we're running out of square footage. And then this is, I just, Pat and I were just talking about doing a quick sketch. It's just a 12 by 10. Do you really like the dormer? Um, I was doing that for the <laughs> giving natural you a light. Time. I was giving it the natural light. But it's I'm, not our purview. I know. But the idea <laughs> was to keep it a simple shed okay. so that I could collect the rainwater and then put it into a rain sure. barrel. So An RDA? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. And it's over existing lawn right now. Yeah, right. Unfortunately, it's all the whole no site's like, lawn, yeah. It wouldn't be so loud, but it was. Right. You, need yeah. to, you could file an RDA with us for that. Okay, I know. All right. <laughs> okay, so it is feasible. Yep. And I can. We can't tell you. No, I know, but I'll, I'll do that and then get the survey. Yep. Going. You okay. can get the RDA online. Okay. Where the hell is Nelson? And don't hire anybody until, until you look at the RDA. I will. Okay? I will. Where is Nelson Road? Where <laughs> is it? I know. Yeah, but so if you go Hatherley, you know the alphabet. I live on Egypt Beach Road. Oh, okay. So we're, at the we're other off one. of Curtis. So Curtis turns oh. into Nelson. So Nelson runs parallel to Turner. Or Okay. So, uh, yeah. So it, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I'm on the like parallel of Hatherley, but you gotcha. go down Curtis. I'm the last house off of Curtis. So that wetlands next yeah. to Curtis okay. and Egypt Beach Road yeah. is my backyard. Gotcha. <laughs> and my entire property. All right. That's it. Yeah. So that was it. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. Well, good, good luck with everything. Oh yeah. Best of luck oh, with. Oh yeah, I just did it today. With everything you got going on. <laughs> Sketched it. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> I would love to get a shed, so that would be great. Well, you're much better than some landscape architects. That oh. You know, but <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. I'm not a landscape. I'm, not, I'm an architect. All right. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. you guys. Have a good one. Yes. Thanks for uh, seeing me on the last minute. Thank you. Glad to. No <laughs> Have a good night. Yes, you too. Thank you. So we've like finished everything. No, we haven't. Let's no, we got a few. Order, order of conditions. No, we did all those. We did, we did all that. Busy. Oh, when you I was busy. doing my videos. Oh, we're paying attention. <laughs> Sorry. We don't. What do we? Because is that Comey or no? I'm uh, kidding. Um, Tomorrow, get it. Wait, wait a minute. Just let me look. Did you add something, Frank, to the agenda that we you wanted to talk about? Alice. Well, I think we're. This really just have to wait and see. Okay. Um, oh, DPW, did, we did the mitigation, priority, prioritized the violations, you gave us your list. Bill added one, and Well, I tried to add one, but you said you'd explain oh, that one. it to yep. me. Yep. And I'd like that explained to me before I go home tonight. It's, um, so I think I can. You know what I'm just finding what? impossible? 
What? That there's not a single one here in Hummer Rock. I know. <laughs> We're straightening the um, to Lisa. The main one, there's do we really have the bulk a, of the problem. Do right. we have a board member that's yeah. resigning? He did. did. Did we take did we take into consideration the what's the one that's way the heck down in Humrock that we chase every year? Oh the US Oh the Corps of Engineers? That's the, the Corps. One? No, no, no. That, that's one forty River. Guy, yeah. Yeah. Or are you talking about the South, South River? River. Yeah. Are you talking about the seawall and the in the I don't know, is this gotta be some the, the woman across the street from you? Um, no, we got Duffy? Duffy. Yeah. That's she's north of me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, we have. Is her. that all cleaned up? <laughs> no, but there's a whole. Boy, it is, it is way oh, cleaner. Oh, than oh there's another list. So much yeah. better than Oh, this, is, a, is, this yeah. is one that we haven't even gotten to yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. These are six. I didn't think you wanted 20 on there that day. You could put 20 on there. <laughs> no, that's fine. So, okay. So, what's the procedure to, to replace a missing. Uh, I, I, somebody resigns. Yeah, he has to submit something to the board of selectmen. I think he did. I, think he I thought he did. Okay. Matt. 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 Mitchell. He might not have sent it yet. So I we're gonna. Ask Lorraine, and we're going through the appointment processes again anyway. So. Yeah. Uh, we scared him away pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well, he he got a new job, and he said yeah. that he had sent a letter to the selectmen resigning. Oh, he sent position. it. Oh, good. Okay. That, that's the email I got. Okay. Oh, we don't get cut. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it'd be that one, and Paul's going to try and re up. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, do we um, have anything else? Can we take a motion to adjourn? I think we I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you.